Hello, this is Junichiro Horikawa, and today I would like to share the template that I created uh, in order to communicate with the Rhino Insight with a Unity. Uh, there are already some examples for uh, Unity uh, Rhino Insight with the Unity, uh, which you can download it from the GitHub page for Unity uh, Rhino Insight on a Unity folder. There's two examples here. One is called sample one, one is called sample two. But there are some um, problem with those examples. That there are some features that missing, which probably a lot of you guys want to know. So I've added several extensions, several functions to the existing samples so that it could be, a, be more useful as a template and could also uh, <clears throat> with some uh, several features. So let me first uh, explain what kind of features that I added. First of all, I added uh, functions in order to read a vertex color from a Rhino mesh into Unity, <coughs> which was not possible before. And also I've added a functions or added a uh, capability to send multiple objects at the same time from uh, Grasshopper to Unity. Previously you needed to send the mesh as a single mesh uh, from Grasshopper to Unity, but now you can you know, send it multiple objects at the same time. And I have also set an option so that you can also send a single mesh which has more than 65,000 vertices, uh, which was not uh, possible before. Uh, <clears throat> the previous examples, previous existing samples, when you try to uh, send mesh which has more than 65,000 vertices, then the mesh will just broken up. <clears throat> That is because uh, the default limitation for the mesh in Unity is 65,000. But I have um, <clears throat> get rid of that um, limitations using some codings. Okay, and I have also made it possible to run the application, the compiled application, to so that it can run uh, a Rhino inside. For the uh, compiled application as well. Currently, I mean, previously, the example only shows you how to use a Rhino Insight in the editor mode, but I have made it possible to make it run on the compiled application, so it works on even though you have compiled it for Macintosh, uh, maybe I mean only for the Windows, but uh, for exit files. <clears throat> okay, so. That's uh, and I have also made a update so that you can uh, reopen the Grasshopper file, a Grasshopper window, even if you have closed it. The previous example was a bit of problematic because if you close the Grasshopper window, then there were no way to reopen it unless you reopen the Unity project itself. So uh, I've made it possible to reopen the Grasshopper file, a Grasshopper folder and you can check that by clicking this button. So let's check what I have right now with the uh, actual example. So if I play it, uh, first of all, I can click this button to open a Grasshopper window, like this, and let's try to open some example, uh, which I have saved for you to test it out, um, which is called rhinoinsideunity.gh. Now this is a simple uh, grasshopper files to create uh, this kind of um, <clears throat> brick wall uh, with some sine wave uh, pattern. And I have also made it per metric so that you can try out several options like with different angles and so on, different wave frequency and a number of tiles on Z direction or horizontal direction and so on. Now, as you can see, you're, you can already see that those uh, bricks, each of the bricks has been colored uh, with the random colors, which has been applied inside Rhino as a mesh color. So one thing you can do is that you can set a mesh color to each of the vertices inside Grasshopper, then send it. If you send it to Unity, then you can just show as it is. If you use the uh, shader with which is capable of showing the vertex color. 
So I also have included the uh, shader which can um, use the vertex color. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, other things, uh, let me show you. Currently, the point, the vertices, number of vertices is 44,000, so it's still in the range for 65,000. But if I try to increase this, uh, make it more dense, like making this packing for Z direction more higher, also for horizontal direction to be more higher. Okay, now it is more dense, it's more. And let's check the number of vertices for this one. And if it says, so six, um, 160,000 points. But as you can see, it's, it is still showing <clears throat> as one mesh, one single mesh right here. And you can actually move it inside the editor. So. <clears throat> That's one thing I've updated and also you can send a multiple meshes all at once uh, I'm I've created this stream to for testing. So if I set it to zero now I'm sending a bunch of um, Meshes like currently I'm sending 6,000 meshes at the same time Now you might not want to do that for unity because it will just kill because each one is going to be used for one drill call so it's better you combine it as much as possible but I just wanted to show that it is possible to send it individually the mesh individually which was not possible previously okay so which might be useful in some case and if you just change it to the other parameter it just updates what it shows inside here so current it just become one mesh again and delete all the previous geometry okay so <clears throat> that's uh, what you can do uh, in order to send a geometry from grasshopper to unity now you can also do the vice versa uh, sending information from unity to grasshopper as well so for that i'm using this component right here for c sharp one if you open this up there is some code in order to retrieve the information from Grasshopper. <clears throat> I mean, from Unity. And I think by uh, looking at it, you'll be able to know <clears throat> what kind of stuff is written here. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Now, what it's doing is that to retrieve some random value uh, from uh, Unity, to use it for random seed uh, for this color of this uh, geometry for this structure. So if I click it, the the random value will be sent to Grasshopper, then be uh, used with this random component to create the random color, then resend it to Unity for visualizing. So if I click it, you see that the color of these bricks are changing. So <clears throat> this is a two-way communication between Rhino I mean Grasshopper and Unity and it is working pretty well with this template. The next thing I would like to try out is to build this application and see if it still runs on a compiled project. Okay, so let's do that by build. And let's just build it inside a build folder. Okay. All right, now let's see. I'm going to open the project exit file and see if it will work. Okay, now a blank scene has been opened. Let's see if I can open the GH by clicking this button and see that you can uh, open up the grasshopper window. <coughs> like I expected and let's also try to open the same example file like this one Rhino inside unity uh, ignore 
and you can see that it is working perfectly and let's see if it can change the geometry by changing those parameters yeah i think it is i think it is working and let's also try clicking this button and you can see that the value the color is being updated so it this still works when you compile the project okay and there might be a situations that you have closed the glass of a window but by clicking this button again you'll be able to reopen the file the window so no problem even if you close the grasshopper <clears throat> file and close it close this with uh, by clicking the cross button you can still open it and reopen the file and still works All right so that's pretty much what I wanted to show uh, how you can use this template which might be useful for some of you if you who you are <coughs> for if you want to work with Rhino and Unity on real time even for a compiled application okay so that's pretty much it um, for a detailed explanation for script I mean there are a bunch of uh, scripting stuff that I wrote <coughs> but you can see all the script inside this Rhino inside folder and there's a convert a grasshopper in unity which is used uh, attached to this game object to create to load the geometry from grasshopper and there's Rhino inside unity which is to which is used to load a Rhino common DLL <coughs> from a Rhino installation folder Okay. Uh, you gotta make one thing you gotta make sure is that inside the Rhino inside folder there is a D2 DLL which you might need to update based on your version of the Rhino 7. So one is the Rhino common DLL and one is the system.drawing.dll. Now for Rhino common.dll just go to the installation folder for Rhino 7 and inside the system folder you'll be able to find this Rhino command so just copy that DLL and paste it inside this folder and that should work for system.drawing DLL you need you need this somehow <clears throat> in order to make an argument uh, sending uh, data from Unity to Grasshopper and I've copied this from a Unity um, folder unity project folder there was a system dot drawing dll for net 4.5 so if you get any errors saying that system drawing dot dll cannot be loaded just go to the current project folder the the project installation folder for unity for your current version then copy a system dot drawing dll and paste it right here and it should work so <clears throat> that's pretty much it um if you have any questions using it please uh send it to me uh and in any way i mean in, by twitter or on um, youtube comment or anything <clears throat> okay i'll try to answer as much as possible or maybe you can go to a github page and create an issue maybe that might be better All right so that's it um uh, that this was not really a tutorial this was to show the template <clears throat> how you can use it okay so I hope you find this useful this template useful and, and please give me any feedback for it okay so this is it for today uh, thank you for watching if you like the video please subscribe and <clears throat> um, I have also start at the patreon page if anybody would like to support me uh continue creating this kind of videos um consider uh supporting me that would be i really appreciate it okay thank you very much and see you next time